Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for House Made, and uh, this week uh, has been an exciting week. We've been working on the Apollo Forge project, developing the ribbon burner uh, sort of manufacturing end of things. Slight design changes that turned out to be kind of um, uh, failures, but uh, learning experiences nonetheless. Uh, and I've been showing this on my Instagram and Facebook feed, so if you're on those two platforms, you can go out and find me there. I'll put links down in the description so you can find that. I usually give updates on a weekly basis there, or daily basis, I should say, and weekly here on YouTube. Um, I'll start off with the ribbon burners. Uh, the ribbon burner project has been kind of one of those things that now I realize why they're not mass produced because they're really difficult to make um, on, on a larger scale anyway. There's a lot of little details that if you don't pay attention to, uh, the burner just will not simply work right. Uh, I did all the math and calculations initially for airflow, water column, all of those things, air fuel mixtures, and then developed a system only to find out that it was really hard to use that system to make these um, sort of even six at a time it was really difficult so uh, i had developed that funnel system to pour the refractory and there's just been numerous challenges with this but um, that's actually what i really love so i keep you know hammering away at those challenges but the the funnel that i 3d printed was a failure because i just simply could not get all the straws to line up to go up underneath so it was just like, well, I'm not going to sit here and try to line each one up individually and whatever else. It just takes more time. I might as well just make a huge mess and clean it up later. But what we did develop was a small uh, sort of uh, tent. It looks like kind of a 3D printed tent that fits down inside of that. So I cut out the old uh, straw, sort of receiver straw things, and then put in this, uh, this sort of uh, angular tent situation that will, will actually provide the right amount of... Uh, protection for those straws and then I started thinking like why am I using these thin straws anyway I should be just using a heavier duty plastic and I know they make those well unfortunately they don't make them in the size that I need them I, I need 0.23 which is um, kind of an unusual size for a rod now you can find them there's like kite manufacturers that make pultruded carbon rods I think fishing pole manufacturers make them but they're a little bit expensive and so I don't I didn't really want to like dive right in with that initially so we're gonna continue with the thin straws for now uh, the system of pulling them through it's a little bit arduous but it works um, the, the the problem with the bigger thicker straws was that they were just simply too big even though I did the math calculations for the uh, back pressure that's needed to do the fuel mixture um, this is something different about it. it does not burn as evenly or as cleanly as I would like it to now this does sound like a nitpick and it might be you know you know the, when you get down to brass tacks when I look inside my forge and I see that clean burn and I see all those holes protruding the all the flames are blue and they're perfect they're coming out of the holes I think to myself that's consistency right that's even heat whereas when I look at the bigger holes and I see, you know, the two on the one side are kind of burning a little sputtery and the ones on the left are burning a little sputtery, but everything else is looking okay, but the bottom is like not quite even. I think to myself, that down the line, believe it or not, I think will cause issues. And I don't want that. I want the highest quality product possible. And I want to be able to educate my customer on that and know that they can achieve the highest quality product if they wanted to. Uh, you know build it themselves so when the plan set comes out for this you'll understand you know a, you'll have a brief understanding at least if you want it of what that looks like to mix fuel and air and back pressure properly because a lot of people don't actually when they build these they don't think in terms of the proper air fuel mixtures so you know they're getting a somewhat clean burn but it's not as efficient as it could be um, and I believe we've achieved that with my original design. So um, we're gonna stick with that for now, but it's just really hard to make, if that makes sense. It's hard to manufacture. Uh, we're working towards uh, fixing that. I think there's solutions out there. I just don't know what they are yet. But um, on a one-off scale, they're actually not that bad to make. I mean, you, you know, the 3D printed molds that I made, really super easy to use. Um, you know, if you're just making one, hey, go for it. It's easy enough. This weekend, which is Labor Day weekend, one of my favorite holidays uh, because it celebrates the working class 
and that's uh, that's all of us. I want to do a sale, so if you go to my website this weekend and you want to buy a Revolution, uh, I'm discounting them seventy-five dollars, and I'm removing weld seams from all of the kits. So you know, for like five hundred and twenty bucks, you can get a Revolution kit and build one yourself. It's only good for this weekend, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So after that, we're gonna go right back to the rate, the same rate. Uh, that we've been charging to put those kits together, but uh, that's a stellar deal. $75 off a Revolution kit. Uh, make sure you pick up some wheels too. We make all of our wheels right here in Florida. Best aluminum out there, 6061 aluminum, aircraft grade, uh, high speed bearings, high quality everything made right here in Florida. So make sure you go check that out. And then we moved on to actually cutting out the forge body. Uh, believe it or not, this was like a thing I just hashed over, hashed over, um, you know, rare, over and over because I felt like the cost of steel now, you know, cutting quarter inch plate, if I screw something up, it's expensive. It's an expensive mistake. Luckily though, uh, the, the cut came out pretty great. I had to do some minor cleanup. It's just because plasma is not as accurate as I would like it to be. Um, however, it fit together great. Uh, we did a test fit up with the fire brick and the, the soft fire brick and the hard fire brick. We've achieved now this tight fit of the ribbon burner where it only requires you to make basically three cuts of the soft fire brick and i was super surprised when you cut fire brick it's so soft it's like uh like easier than cutting paper like on a bandsaw so you can do it um, i'm very confident that when you go to build this forge that you'll actually be able to cut that fire brick yourself because the ultimate goal for this is kind of like the revolution where you'll buy a forge kit from me and you'll get a plan set and then I'll show you how to assemble it all. Um, and then there'll be a few items that you'll order yourself, like the fire brick. I'm not going to pretend that I have the capacity to ship that much fire brick um, safely, by the way, because it's kind of fragile. There's companies out there that actually make fire brick and ship fire brick every day. So uh, I'll just make recommendations for that. And then you, you know, basically will have to go out and buy that stuff. But uh, the rest of it, you know, we're probably going to source here. Uh, but you'll, again, like the Revolution Project, you'll have a list of hardware, all the, you know, all the fittings, everything you need for the ribbon burner, how to assemble it and all of that. Um, but you can buy it from me if you'd like. Um, but uh, so anyway, we did get a chance to test fire. Um, we were working on figuring out that ribbon burner problem. We test fired that. It, it was not good, so we went ahead and scrapped that. And then we test fired the Apollo uh, Forge as a whole unit, okay? Um, and also, when you see these videos of the time lapses, you're not seeing some of the ceramic blanket that gets put inside of this thing. These were just test fit up videos that we made uh, during the process of fitting it all together. There is a ceramic blanket that protects the steel um, against the radiation of the heat from the insulating fire brick. One of the things I think is really important to understand when you're building a forge, um, you know, you're talking about efficiency, right? So you want, you know, atmospheric burners burn at specific efficiency and ribbon burners burn. I've heard all kinds of stories about people increasing their efficiency by 50%. I'm not really convinced that a ribbon burner is any more efficient than an atmospheric burner as far as fuel consumption. What I am convinced of though is how evenly it spreads the heat out throughout the forge itself. That's like a really important part because you imagine two little or sometimes one atmospheric burner burning in one two inch radius versus a burner that's nine inches wide and three and a half inches tall that's going to give you a much better coverage as far as your BTUs go when you're inserting energy into any sort of box, right? The other half of that equation is how much insulation you have inside of that thing, right? So, uh, you know, you're seeing these inexpensive forges on eBay and Amazon, and, you know, um, I've had one, I owned one, I made things with it. it they work fine. The downside is, is they radiate so much heat that um, you're losing the efficiency. You know, th the thing was cheap, but uh, there's just simply, you know, all that heat is just radiating out into your shop. It's, you know, heating you up. It's, it's just, uh, in my opinion, not the best way to do it. The, for the Apollo Forge has a two and a half inch thick soft fire brick, which is insulating fire brick on the inside that's rated to 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. The Castellite 30, which is what we cast our ribbon burners with, is rated to 3,000 Fahrenheit. 
All of these things matter because they are considered insulating materials, meaning they do not radiate heat. Now the floor of the forge is hard fire brick and that will wick away um, you know, energy at times. And the, the reason why we use hard fire brick on the bottom is simply for um, resistance. You know, uh, it needs to be able to stand up against uh, flux and carbon and all these other things. You're constantly setting things on it. So it requires a little bit more of a sturdy um, platform for stuff like that. It's not my first choice, but it just makes the most sense. I think there's really no other choice. I mean, unless you guys know of something else to use on a forge floor. I know there's like... Uh, some alumina type stuff that's out there, um, but I need to be educated more on it. But this, the hard fire brick is just easier to acquire. Uh, so we test fired the Apollo Forge. It was a massive success. Uh, you know, uh, the thing burns evenly. It warms up fast. Forging temperatures in 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, you know, the, the heat radiation from the device was very minimal. You could set your hand on top of it, even after it was running at 2100 degrees for 20 minutes. You know, things like that are those things that make uh, all of this time, effort, research and development worth it, you know, for me, because I, you know, you have a theory in your head and you hope it works, but then when you actually put it into play uh, and you see it happening, um, man, it, uh, it's, it gives me goosebumps, still does. I just, I love my work so much. And um, speaking of loving your work, I, I hope you guys understand by watching my videos, commenting and liking and all of that, you're supporting my channel and and you know by doing so and and um i when i started this journey like three and a half four years ago i had no idea that um you know that number one i would have an impact on a community and that was a huge deal for me that you know my my work was recognized you know people were benefiting from the things that i was doing on a mass scale uh but then also the impact that you have on me um, you know, you, I really do, do truly believe that the, this type of collaboration through social media is an important part of the, um, I know it sounds dramatic, but uh, the, the advancement of the human race, okay? And, and, and how we leverage technology and science and all of these things, you know, even though we're doing this in an artistic sense, most of us, uh, you know, tooling is an important part for the advancement of us as a human species. So anyway, if you guys got something out of today's video, I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> if you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you click that little bell, you get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There's so many ways to support my channel. And by far the best way is to go to my website, housemade.us uh, and buy pieces, parts, and plans for the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project. And soon enough, the Apollo, uh, the Apollo Forge project will be out and we'll be able to um, you know, start heating up some steel and glass and whatever else you guys wanna make with it. I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been House Made.